It's time to review Kaya Dark Lineage for the PlayStation 2. Okay, to answer your first question, yes, I got interested in this game after watching Scottish DuckTales' PlayStation 2 collection video where I mentioned this game and I saw it a while back in Cash Connectors for 5 Euro and I figured, why not? Now, about this game, okay, you know the kind of games that use cliffhangers at the end and use that to try to get a sequel, but the game in general just didn't get a sequel due to low sales? Well, Dark Lineage is the worst example of that. For comparison, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, another kind of those games, sold around 406,000 copies from October to December 2010. And from 2003 to 2005, over the space of two years, Kaya apparently sold under two thousand copies my god was it that bad well from the sound of it apparently not it just came in at a really awful time in an over saturated platforming market but if this game did get a sequel would it have deserved it well let's find out the story of the game is that a young girl named Kaya has accidentally warped herself and her brother Frank to another world with a weird world transporting medallion. I don't get it either. Kaya and Frank are separated and Frank is captured by strange creatures named Wolfins who are under the command of Razul, an evil genius who for some reason decides to wear a birdcage on his head. Why? Kaya is about to get captured by the Wolfins but is saved by fox-like creatures called natives and upon arriving into their village Kaya finds out a few things. First of all, Wolvens are actually captured and corrupted natives. Secondly, Razul is actually her long-lost father. Yes, they're playing the Darth Vader card already. Thirdly, the only way she can get herself and Frank back home is to collect all the pieces of this world's dimension transporting medallion thingy. And finally, she can, for whatever reason, exercise Wolvens and turn them back into natives. So it's up to Kaya to collect the medallion runes, exercise the Wolvens, save Frank, defeat Brazil, and possibly save this weird, strange world. Kaya Dark Lineage is a 3D platformer, but a hybrid kind, combining the collecting aspects of games like Jack and Daxter, and the linear point A to point B aspects of games such as Rayman 2 and Crash Bandicoot. The X button jumps with surprisingly no double jump. The square button is the context sensitive button, but is mostly used to throw around your hairband batarang thing known as a boomy. The circle button calls stuff your floating guide for whenever you get stuck. The triangle button exercises wovens and warp gates, which you can use to travel to different parts of the level you're in. The L1 button strangely accesses the map, and the L2 button crouches. To exercise the wolvings and warp gates, you'll need mana orbs, which are fairly common, but at the start of the game you can only hold about 50 of them. However, when you collect the medallion runes, your amount increases by 50 for each rune you collect. Also, you're going to need to collect coins called nudies to buy items at the native shops in order to progress Welcome. through the game. However, you'll need to exercise a certain amount of wolvings to bring you back several shops in the village, deal. because the natives were too stupid to put all of their items into one shop. Also, be on the lookout for extra life hearts, which will give you an extra health bar whenever you collect one of them. Now, this game has two major differences from other 3D platforms, the free-falling and the combat. The free-falling, while nothing new in general, becomes a major part of the obstacles you'll encounter, and the combat is actually very complex to the point where a fighting game could be made out of it. There are tons and tons of combos, you'll need to buy bracelets in the shops as they'll increase the number of combos you can make along with your strength, and the developers were even smart enough to put in a system where the Wolvens actually block repeated combos, which stops spammers from winning and inserts a lot more strategy into how you fight. Now one of the things that bugged me at the beginning of the game was that you never seemed to have enough orbs to exercise the Wolvens who accidentally have the number of orbs they go up to at least 50, which is ridiculous. 
It's made even worse by the fact that when you collect orbs, unless they're from an orb supplier, they're permanently gone. You will never get them again. Also, it seems that every enemy the game introduces is made with the intent to annoy the living hell out of you. For example, those dogs that lunge at you and immediately kill you, or the enemies with the guns that shoot you and you fall off because you get knocked back at least 5 feet whenever you're hit. Now, the thing I liked the least about this game, however, is the incredibly forgettable music. Mainly because it's just one of those things you really shouldn't do in a 3D platformer. I mean, for goodness sake, if you want people to remember your game better, put in more memorable music. Now, aside from that, there actually is a lot to like about this game. For starters, the visual style is rather unique, and the scope of the visuals are very epic, though reminiscent of another platformer of Vex, due to floating chunks of earth in the landscape. Also, I really like the sections where you're riding on a board, as it's just so much fun and actually really intense. Plus, I have to thank the developers for putting in a warp tunnel system to get to certain areas in the level, because a lot of them are freaking huge! The combat is also brilliant, very in-depth, challenging, and it actually prevents spamming, one of the few miracles of the world. The platforming was fun, albeit somewhat satisfying to play as well. Even more so if you ignore the goddamn lava level, where the lava constantly rises and sets. Believe me, it's very annoying. However, my favorite thing about the game is just how silly it gets completely by accident. Let me list three examples just so you get what I mean. For starters, the shopkeeper seemed to have the changing vocal cords problem that the hobos from Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion had. Another time was when I had to fight about 15 wolven near the end of the game, and one of them just kept firing rockets. And because the majority of the wolven were a pain to beat, I simply just ran around them for about 10 minutes and let the rocket launching idiot kill everyone. Seriously, it actually worked. But the straight out winner of absurdity here has to be the ending credits theme, mainly because of the music that plays. Why? Well, I don't know the name of the song, but basically it is Jamaican rap mixed with orchestral music that completely unsuits the game, and actually it's the only song I can remember. It is just ridiculous. Look it up on YouTube. Although I should mention that the credits may be different from other versions of the game. I'm just specifically talking about the European version. Kaya Dark Lineage is a fun game with unique visuals, a really helpful warp pipe system, accidentally hilarious nonsense, an epic scope, brilliant combat, awesome board running sections, and fun if slightly unsatisfying platforming. However, it is let down by extremely annoying enemies, stupid sections, having to get loads and loads of mana orbs to help exercise the enemies, which can get pretty annoying at times, and hugely forgettable music. Okay, I do think this game actually does deserve a sequel, if only to fix the flaws it has. However, its embarrassingly low sales really bring that into question. But in any case, I give Kaya the Dark Lineage a rating of pretty good. Nothing spectacular, but a fun game to play nonetheless. What do you think?